government agencies include the PPDA, NATO Uganda, KCCA, Uganda National Roads Authority, and many other agencies. Now, however, some members of the civil society think besides this initiative, government must embrace and promote social accountability and citizens' participation in the delivery of infrastructure projects in Uganda. But just how can this be achieved and what is the likely impact on service delivery and infrastructure development? Now, we're joined by Honorable Nathan Bianima. He is the chairperson of Cost Multi Stakeholder Group, a civil society block that has conducted a study on citizens' needs and concerns on public infrastructure projects whose findings were released recently. Welcome to Morning at NTV Online. Thank you, and uh, morning, our distinguished viewers. Now, we'll start the conversation with what the findings were in the study that you conducted. The study is revealed to us in Uganda that most of the projects, especially infrastructure, where a gross amount of money is spent all over in our budget, our end users, who are the beneficiaries, the, our citizens, don't know much about the projects. And why is this? It's because most of the information is not given to them. A project comes like a confidential matter. Classified. And classified. <laughs> and yet, this project is meant for our people. Mm -hmm. So you remember how we used to have the budget speech. It used to be confidential and people would be scared. Mm -hmm. But now it has been liberalized. Before the budget is read, we all know. So that's how we want the initiative of cost. Construction Transparency Initiative is to ensure that most of the projects are where the information concerning the project, the cost, the value of the project, the scope of work, and the duration. So that uh, all that information is simply and friendly you know, given to the people, mm -hmm. our citizens, so they can be part and even appreciate and own the projects. We shouldn't see the projects as if they are a separate you know, package for them. No, no, no. We want them at the initial stages, even in procurement. Let them know. For example, in Kampara here, when most of this, like uh, the, the roundabout of fairway and most of this Kampara city, mm -hmm. work was good, yes, right. but were citizens involved? Mm -hmm. Not at all. That's what we want. You know, we're looking at this particular figures of this particular, you know, survey that you did for six months in Jinja, Gulu, and Wachiso districts. Mm. And um, it's unfortunate because a majority are saying that, number one, we were not consulted, mm -hmm. even with regards to just getting these contractors. Mm -hmm. We did not know anything about it. Now, the project started, and we don't get these jobs as well. So who is... Fooling who? Or who can we point fingers at with regards to the same? Because it's not the first time that uh, these things are happening. And it's not just because you now have a survey out. It's been something that has been happening year in, year out, and nothing is changing. Yes, it is true it has been happening. But I don't want to blame anybody now. Okay. Our initiative is new. It was started in 2013 through Uganda National Roads Authority, which requested for this initiative from UK in Britain to cushion themselves from this world of shoddy work and what have you. What was the intention is for them to involve the citizens, engage, you know, to engage the citizens. So that if a road is supposed to be done between Kampara to Masaka, let the people, the beneficiaries, get concerned in the initial stages, get to know what is going to be done for them mm -hmm. so they can have a say, so they can be able to own and actually appreciate. The government pain for many suffers, especially the president when he's campaigning and doing it. Mm -hmm. said, people ask, what is this and this? They, the people don't, because he doesn't know what was done. If the people were involved at the initial stages, people would get to appreciate what the government is doing for them. After all, the projects are meant for them. When you so, talk about the beneficiaries, Honorable, the mm -hmm. projects are meant for each and every one of us. Yes. On this table, we're asking the questions. Mm. We want to know. But does someone down in Kisoro, someone down in Nakapiripiriti want to know? Because a number of people within society want to know, but then there's also a number of people within that particular society that feel that they don't even want to know anymore. They say that government is just going to come and tell us things. They don't want us to be a part of it. So there's also the feeling that perhaps the society doesn't want to know. No, 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 no. Our society is very alert. Mm. They would want to be given information. Like you're talking about the report. Our team went to Jinja, went to Guru, went to Mbari, went to Wakiso. For example, we have worked closely with Wakiso and KCC here. What we have found out from people is that it has been like a tradition, like a ritual, that a project comes and the people concerned are the procurement or like Minister of Works, then the contractor, the consultant, period. People see it coming. People are awake. And two, we have members of parliament 
who are desirous of getting this information mm -hmm. to them. They don't know. That's why at times they, they raise issues like that. What we want is to have a fresh page starting in this country, mm -hmm. whereby any project is coming in, people should be informed. This Whose project role is it to inform the people? It should be government, and that's why some of us are coming in. Ours is an initiative, a charity really. We're not earning money from anything, nobody. I'm retired, uh, more as politician, but we are, this is a group that has co-opted, built, it's a stakeholders group, mm -hmm. where government comes in, civil society comes in, and the private people comes in. Right. And we engage even the media, because the media, you are the people who will give the information to the public. For example, when we are here, mm -hmm. information will go. So our, co co our cause is, let's have this information to read to our people. All right, okay. And looking at these statistics, now 57% of the people that you have actually surveyed or talked to uh, during the six months in Jinja, Gulu, and Wachiso are saying that uh, they're not satisfied with the quality of this particular project. Let's not even go too far. <laughs> let's talk about the Nile Bridge that mm. costed us 390 billion Uganda shillings and now is undergoing, you know, repair works. What's your take on this? I mean, we just commissioned this bridge in October last year. Uh, but at least the beauty of it, I think the only mistake that was done is not for UNRWA to have come out openly at the beginning that uh, we Ugandans were extremely sorry there could have been some technical errors on the work, but we are going to do it because the, the works are still under the flexibility period. So the contractor still is liable to do the work. Those mistakes are normally happen. You never know definitely. We can't blame them. But to come out and inform the people in time. For example, our series of our cost went to the, the, to the Nile mm. when they were working with. We asked some good, quite a number of information to help them. Mm -hmm. But they all said, no, we are not. That's right. It's a secret. But here, this is an appeal to us that we want Uganda National Road Authority to be on board. They are the people who initiated this, but they are more or less like having cold feet about it. Do you we think that the issue of the Nile Bridge is a matter of um, us giving a less, you know, how, how will I put it, uh, the wrong person this particular contract to build this? Because if we are talking about repairing the asphalt that is not, you know, working well with the ab water absorbing material pretty much, then is it a matter of we gave a contract to a contractor who is ill equipped to deliver on this project? No, 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 no. no. Those errors normally happen in the engineering. Mm -hmm. I think the technical people can explain to us more. But this was a good project, well done, just as possible with everybody, but some errors have come up and they must be notified. They are not very really structured that they are, that, you know, affecting the whole bridge. No, 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 no. If you are talking of the asphalt, that is the layer on top. Like it happened on uh, the Road sometime back, and it was rectified. Mm -hmm. No, our people should be rest assured that that was a good project done in Uganda, and we must pay thank you for doing it. Mm -hmm. But we must move an extra mile and ensure that our people we are you stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Our citizens are engaged at a higher level, members of parliament, everybody. Because for them, them they talk, you know, the information is technical, these people cannot understand. Mm -hmm. Use a friendly information that you can relate to people. Exactly. There are these billboards that you write. Mm -hmm. The contract, don't make it complicated. Make it to the people so people can know what it's doing. People have been talking, for example, shoulders, people don't know. Mm -hmm. We can tell them shoulders, it's the other lane after the main carriageway, mm. because most of the carriageway, there are seven meters of the road. So there is one meter normally, or one man and a half meters at the end. Mm. Tell people that you don't drive on shoulders, which means you do, don't drive on that lane. Mm. That is for pedestrians. Okay. Honorable, you mentioned one thing which is transparency, mm. and going back to when you say, you know, should have perhaps apologized or made, made it clear for the people, explained to the people. And a number of times we find that eventually the people get to know of these things after something has happened. Mm. And there is explaining when something is going on, but also explaining to people that this is what has happened now, this is what we're going to do, and not just simply letting the people, you give them the information you think they want. Where would you put the transparency of government authorities and bodies vis a vis the people? people needing to know the information? Of course, much as we want everything to be transparent, I must caution that we can't go on the heads of the people because that's psychological, equal as we can't go on security. But as regards infrastructure, social services, there is no point whatsoever why people should not be informed. Mm -hmm. Because you're not doing, you're not building in your own house, this is a public good. So the moment UNRWA gets involved in the project. What is the purpose? 
tell the people who are really there. Even the, the media. For us, we have been using the media because we are, these are friendly forces that actually can relay the information on our behalf. So, you know, for example, must have even had the, the, the media first to tell them what, support, what how message should go. You know, the problem is when you don't give information to the people, the journalists are very good at piecing up pieces of information mm -hmm. and they will put it in the, in the place. Is it piecing up or <laughs> investigating? They investigate, but when you, the most important thing is for you to come near to the media and mm. give them information they want. Mm. Add enough. But the moment they, they are in the first, they are, the, they are in the four right now, the four. Then you are in problem, definitely. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be a big hard right, of yes. explaining to the public. Honorable, seventy-one percent of the people that you actually talked to say that uh, they were not satisfied with the level of involvement in this particular project. And this will bring me to the question on social accountability. What ideally should be happening in the project life cycle, in a project's life cycle, from beginning to the end? First and foremost, we have been spending quite a good amount of money on compensating people. But I can tell you our initiative with Wakiso and KCC here. Here, where the, 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 the former executive director, Mosesi, Jennifer Mosesi, went to most of these areas and told them, we want to make some of these roads into a trading center in your communities, Robaga, Nakawa, everywhere in Kampara. So we said, now talk to the people. Let them know the use of the project that's coming, the scope of work and what have you. And yet you don't even have money to compensate. You are trying to tarmac a six meter in Rubaga or a Tete mm -hmm. They don't have the money. People appreciate it. People gave out their land freely because they were involved and they appreciated the project. Mm -hmm. Because people were, in, were involved right from the initial stages before the project takes off. So what's the problem? What's skin off the back of the Grand National Road Authority, Minister of Works, Minister of Health, all these Minister of Education to involve people when they are putting up a school, for example? or disruptions in primary schools and secondary schools. Right. Why don't you involve people so that these people can provide an extra eye on monitoring? They appreciate the value for money, they will own it, and they will never, never abandon you. They will appreciate. People will not even be bothering for campaigns, especially the president, because he has done a good work, work has been done. Mm. But work is that people don't know. For example, people don't know that there are people who are on the roads, on our roads, slashing every kilometer being paid 150,000 per month. We have said to give this, this job to people who are living near the roads, and especially women, are women. They will do the work, but the work is given to some people because it is separate. It is given to some people, councillors, rich people, and they end up by giving people 20,000 per month. Correct. But imagine you give an, a, a, a woman in the village there, mm. 100,000 around Kampara, Kisoro, Kisoro Road, what will happen? Fantastic work. The drainage will be cleaned, they, they will search on the, on the sides, and we shall be okay. In terms of good practices, is it uh, mandatory for the government or the authorities of, uh, you know, concerned, for example, owner, to reveal to the masses or the citizens how long a project, a project ideally should take? We know, for example, the northern bypass that has been taking forever. <laughs> mm. Yes, not forever. It is almost getting completed, my dear. It's been waiting for almost... And of course... Mm. It's cost a lot of, mm. you know, especially for the business people who are on that particular, you know, road, mm. have been complaining that, hey, this thing is yes. taking so long and affecting yes. our businesses. Mm. So should the authorities concerned reveal such information, for example, the duration that a project needs to take? Yes, um, my dear daughter, I really thank you for that. That's a good information we want. For example, Northern Bypass is 21.5 kilometers. The first, you remember the first project, we secured 50 meters across. Do you know that currently, because people don't know, people have again claimed again, and now we are, we did only, they, they tamaked a carriageway for 3.5 kilometers, mm -hmm. only at the beginning, because they didn't have the money, but you could see bridges that go across. So, now this other part is to have a dual carriage for the whole 21.5 kilometers. Correct. But well, people have had the challenges of compensating. Why compensate? If this information had been read, everybody, mm -hmm. people would be saying, why do you want more money? You were paid here before, Aria, you remember the first phase, now the second phase, because people don't know. And uh, what we want, what we are appealing to, like even coming here, is to ensure that the government, our champion is the Honorary Minister of Works, you know, would want these things to be a policy, a policy, mandatory policy.
so that at the end of the day, before project starts, this information is read in the papers. Mm -hmm. People get to know and then discuss in several discussions. Mm -hmm. Ugandans are intelligent people. They are good people who are willing to accept information. Mm -hmm. Like you, all of you are getting involved. So like that, the Northern Bypass, it will get finished. But the problem is people don't to know. They see closed here. Here, mm -hmm. you tell them people, we did 3.5 kilometers of dual carriage. Now we are from, that is from Huima Road to Gayaza Road. Okay. Now we want to have a full scale up to Busega, up to where you get it. Mm -hmm. You see, people don't know, and people would appreciate. People would help you know that. People would even be willing to give out their land because they want the Tamak Road, because wherever it passes, you know, development comes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah? it does. Yes. So that's something I would request you really to plead for to advocate for because you are a friendly force in the media and we can't do without you by the way. We can't do without you. So we feel on this group, well, ours is a friendly one by the way. We don't even criticize anybody. Right. If a mistake comes up, we sit with you, correct this one so that we are not like auditors or people who are chasing up yeah. or corrupt people and what have you. No, 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 no. As we wrap up this conversation, mm -hmm. we talk about monitoring and yes. you can also talk about corruption, mm -hmm. where it comes in, where the citizen's role is in that, mm -hmm. calling out and maybe being able to ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Where would you put the citizen at this point in time and also in the report? You know, the, the citizens, of course, they have been disadvantaged, mm -hmm. but it's not lost. I said we are opening a fresh page. Our initiative is to ensure that uh, right from the initial stages, the engagement of the citizens. We have the barazas, like mm -hmm. in Wakiso. You can't believe in Wakiso. We have done commendable work with them, and they are accepting, they like, they like it. Because the people get to know. So people would have eaten money. Mm -hmm. Now it will not easily be eaten, because there are so many eyes looking at the project. Mm. Who would be checking, but putting up serious questions. So that's what people are fearing, even some of the engineers. Mm. They don't want people to know. But we are saying, tell them it is 21 kilometers, it will take three years. It will cost, the amount, this, will cost this amount of money <laughs> on a simple notes board, mm. and people get to know. Right. At the end of the day, we want people to account. To account for what they are doing. Mm. Honorable, that's all. last question. What are the chances of this being taken up by government? No, government is willing. We have approached the Prime Minister's office, right from the Prime Minister's office, and we are moving with even the Department of Ethics and Integrity, mm -hmm. and uh, we have people from uh, the Prime Minister's office on our board. So we hope it's a matter of time, because the results are coming out. Any time? How long? No, no, no. So, so soon because we want to get involved especially like in this budget. All right. That most of the projects with UNRWA, I have an appointment with the, the ED of, uh, of uh, the UNRWA National Order Authority. This is what we want to do. We have moved the step. We have moved the step and we are saying what we have lost, we have lost it. But let's not Again. Let's okay. not cry over spilt mm. no, milk. No, 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 no. Let's okay. move. We hope this won't be another report that just comes out with great statistics but mm. zero uptake. No, 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 no. <laughs> I cannot tell you if you ask people of Wakiso mm -hmm. and, uh, and even KCC, we have engaged them and they are taking a leave. Right. Because after all, our initiative cautions them from the side. Why do you talk about corruption? We have been with you, we have been doing work with you, together with you, mm -hmm. on, on the edge, edge, seeing you know, what is being done. So you should appreciate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where you now know as a citizen where you stand when it comes to our public infrastructure and holding the government accountable. You can ask the questions and perhaps the government will take it on and be willing to give us the information that is required in each and every project, how much it will cost, how long it will take, how wide the project is going to be so that you know wherever it is, whether you are in the village or you're here within Kampala, you know what's going on and you can hold your government accountable. We have been joined by Honorable Nathan Bianyuma, who is the chairperson of COST. Thank you so much for coming through, Thank Honorable. You. And hopefully we'll be hosting you soon with some other great news from Please, the government. Yes, we will. We will. Okay. That has been our Kickstarter segment for this morning. We'll be returning with Take Note. Thank you. Can we find a mechanic? Catch it! For what? For what? Catch it!
Trápena. Finished. You have network here. 